these are real rolling mountains as you can see most of them today are in a degraded state the tallest of them rises to about 722 meters but geologists have said they have evidently found that these mountains were as tall as the himalayas once upon a time shocking isn't it even me and this guy over here we have we have fixed our eye sights constantly on these mountains trying to figure out what are these changes that caused these mountains to shrink in size to shrink in size rather that they are today and we have found out that not only these mountains everything around us is constantly in a state of flux everything around us changes and it has changed and it will change mountains have been reduced to plateaus plateaus been reduced to plains and plains being brought down to make up valleys and when it's again brought up to make mountains so, so the question is bound to occur why are these changes occurring continuously why what is the reason for these changes to occur what are the forces responsible in this video we are going to study the same i am pratik Wagmare, and in this video we will be studying about the movement of the earth the earth's surface is changing continuously as i have said earlier our only mountains being shrunk in size here is not a fact or which occurred overnight it has happens on a larger scale and in a larger uh, time frame spanning millions of years to be pursued by human eye so it is really difficult to be pursued by human eye below are the factors uh, which are responsible primarily for these changes to occur the first is radioactivity in the earth's interior then the second is the crustal plates uh, movement due to tectonogenesis and the rotation of the earth and the climatic factors like wind precipitation pressure wells etc so we'll study one by one first thing to come up is radioactivity and for you to know radioactivity you should know what isotopes really are isotopes could be known as twins with some overall same overall and general properties but different weight or mass number as you can see here these two girls they have striking resemblance but if i want you to find out who is really who then the best method would be to weigh them in they definitely will have different body weights so basically this is the idea the same elemental carbon over here has different atomic weights owing to this uh, different number of neutrons in the nucleus as you can see carbon 12 has 6 neutrons carbon 13 has 7 neutrons and carbon 14 has 8 neutrons maybe these have the overall general properties but they have different atomic weights that is what isotope really is now you know what an isotope is let's consider the nucleus let's consider the nucleus of an isotope basically here two forces are acting one is the bad boy electro repulsive electromagnetic force and one is the good boy that is the nuclear binding force so what what is happening over here is this repulsive electromagnetic force is making these atomic particles to repel themselves whereas this force is trying to keep them uh, keep them abound all right so these forces are constantly fighting but in case of isotope the size of the nucleus is really large and that is why the electromagnetic force is larger whereas the nuclear binding force remains the same so the electromagnetic force uh, tries to tear this arrangement in the nucleus apart this leads to some neutrons in trouble so they emit radiations and the nucleus becomes lighter so that it is not under any risk from this bad boy electromagnetic force so radiation uh, the radioactive radiation is simply an attempt to save itself from this electromagnetic force uh, and that is what happens after the radiations is, are emitted it is emitted in the form of beta particle gamma rays or alpha particles now the next thing you must be know uh, you, you must know is isostasy so isostasy could be related to a ship floating on the water a ship related to the cross and the water being asthenosphere as you can see the ship is cruising safely over the water and uh, it is in a state of equilibrium the two forces are, uh, are acting here one force is exerted by the ship in a downward motion by a, in a downward direction on the water body and the water body reacts to it and exerts an equal and opposite force now we see two elephants have join, joined in the party and due to this the overall load of the ship has been increased tremendously this is causing the ship to sink in now realizing that their lives are at stake 
One elephant decides to jump, in, jump into the water and swims his way through. So there is only one big boy on the ship. The ship is comparatively at a downward uh, level, level as compared to the first picture, but it, it is a at a comparatively safer, safer level than this picture, right? So basically the idea is the increase in load makes the ship sink in and the more force it has to face from this water. Now let's see what isostasis, gravity or weight or the lithos of the lithosphere pressing down on the asthenosphere. This basically this thing, it is just pressing down on the asthenosphere, the ship being the crust and the water being the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere, asthenosphere reacts and pressing up on the lithosphere. When these two forces are in balance, that is isostasis, basically this kind of thing. As the earth changes, isostatic adjustment occur until the isostasis is reached again. See, see here the changes they are responding, this system is responding to changes till the balance or even partly, uh, partly a balance is achieved. It is trying to stay in balance and that is why there is constantly changes that are subjected to this surface that is the ship and the water that is the asthenosphere so this isostatic adjustment causes the rock to deform mainly due to the stress so the basic idea is the load is exerted on the asthenosphere by the crust and the asthenosphere reacts to it in some kind of way you can relate it to the arauli mountains too the arauli mountains were at uh, were as of the size of the himalayas as i have told earlier but when the erosion happened, the weight of the mountains reduced, subjecting the mountain to rise up and expose the uncovered surface even more. So this erosion, it, this process is just applying to the bottomest layer of the Arauli mountains. Maybe the layers of the Arauli mountains that we see today, maybe at one point of time they were lying under the asthenosphere like here like you can see here might be they were buried into the asthenosphere like this layer of the ship which we can never see which is buried in the uh, uh, sea level so the another force that is really important is the tectonic plate movements and this uh, plate movements owe their movement to the uh, asthenosphere again the convection currents generated there will study this uh, later in the later parts of our series in great detail but for now you should know that these plates that the plates are moving continuously and they are responsible for various formations on the earth like the Himalayas is a result of the Indian plate striking the Eurasian plate and uh, similarly the Andes and the um, Rockies over here these are also generated by these are also formed by the movement of the tectonic plates and the forces due to rotation we have already talked about this in the previous video but let me repeat the core outer core is liquid and it responds to the rotation of the earth and due to its response there are changes on the earth's surface as well as its interior so this is basically the idea the next thing we should know is geomorphic process geomorphic process relating to the form morph means form form of the landscape basically studying what form of landscape is uh, surrounding you like the mount is it a mountain is it a plateau is it a plain and if it's a plain if it's a mountain or if it's a plateau then why is it plain why or why is it plain why is it a mountain why is it a plateau basically that kind of idea these changes they found the geologists have found that these changes are due to endogenic and exogenic forces endogenic forces which are acting from the interior and exogenic forces which are acting on the surface of the earth so these are the basic divisions we'll study about these in great detail in the next video and uh, i'm really grateful that you have joined us into this journey